I just made a couple of running repairs to our water system. Noticed up here we did have this one, the outflow of that tank flowing across in that pipe there and going to basically down and out into a swale. Um, that was because when I put this in we used, there wasn't much rain, and we used river water to be able to water the plants when we first put them in. So I had this one feeding out and it's higher than that one. And then this one feeding straight uh, out to the swale. This one was blocked on its outlet. Now we're in the wet season and we're getting plenty of rain. Uh, fortunately the boys were on this, which is great of the, having them um, thought about that. They cleaned out the river water from this tank and now it's full of rainwater. They've been uh, taking the water from here and favoring that one initially and now it's completely full. So what I've done now is connected this one that we did have it this way and I've just put it back that way. That pipe just happened to be in the shed and was a perfect size. So I've joined them together again and then the outflow is from this. So when this one fills, which shouldn't be too far off, I'd reckon, but obviously we're using water out of that. Uh, but when it does rain, if we're overflowing there, that means both tanks are full completely. So that was a small, easy modification. <laughs> the other thing that I've done that we won't really, I don't think, well, no, we don't. We don't need to use it this time. Fortunately, no one had seemed to notice this because it was still broken. And that was down here. I had a, I had intended, I had a bit of a T-junction here with a, a valve um, as an outlet into the swale and had it ready to go down to the chicken area. And this one here, or a angle, got broken. Someone had stood on it, obviously. Um, so rather than repairing the whole thing, I've just taken that off. We're not going to do that at the moment. Um, we're filling at least one. We should have some more. So I think uh, we're going to have to buy a few more of the 200 litres. They're really handy. And then we can capture. Well, really, we could have four down there or be you know, capturing off a couple of roofs. And that should be plenty to keep the chickens going for quite a while in water. Uh, so I'm just going to leave this for now. That's it's sort of not the priority at the moment. What I did have this for last time, uh, I've got a tap there. And we fed this across and put another tap over on the, uh, the shed over the other side. And we've got a hose on that and that was to uh, water these plants down here. Now that worked sort of okay, but it was really last minute. We, I just got it finished as we left. And we're over to water the plants once now. I don't know how long Uncle watered the plants for. But now that we're in the rainy season, it's fine. We don't really need that. So obviously we still need to, to do it and get it working. And it, what I need to work out now, um, I think what I'm going to head towards is maybe buy another tank. Uh, we've now got 4,000 litres for showering and washing and 700 litres for drinking. I'm pretty sure that one's full too. So what we need now is to think about the dry season and for the plants. So maybe 4,000 litres will do, but the way I want to continue this is uh, is doing, if we come here, you know, if we're here three weeks in the dry season, we're, there's not going to be enough water still. And until we can start to make some bigger tanks, we're stuck with these pretty much because that's a big, big use of resources to, to make our own tank. Um, obviously getting dams going is another one, but again, I probably need heavy earth for moving equipment for that, which we can't do at the moment. So I'm, I'm thinking of either putting a third tank here or possibly more likely putting a third tank and potentially more over at the shed. The shed has got a decent um, capture area and we could be capturing there. But the other thing is this one was really useful to be able to put in the back of the ute, go to the river and get water if needed. So 
I'm sort of reluctant to use this. So anyway, that's I've got to think about that. I saw a uh, 1500 litre for sale at City Hardware. That could be a way to go. Um, because the other thing was the height of these tanks, I think, is too high to fit in over at the shed. Now, obviously, it's going to be lower, and I toyed with the idea initially of of uh, making these the same, the bottom of the tank's the same level over there, but it means that we're up about at least a metre in the air, and that's possibly just too high. That means uh, you know, constructing something fairly robust to handle two tonnes of, uh, of weight of water. And it's interesting, uh, I saw the... Um, uh, Darlin, what's the, the, the one you watched that the tank collapsed? Channel? Oh, the Philippine Expat something. Philippine Expat, one of them, they had a tank like this. They'd made, a, I think it was just a wooden base, maybe bamboo, or, but um, it certainly wasn't up to <laughs> the full weight of 2,000, or maybe it was a smaller tank, uh, you know, but between 1,000 and 2,000 kilograms. So uh, the thing collapsed and, uh, you know, the tank was wrecked. It was quite a shame, you know. Um, I noticed, too, most people are using the blue pipe, and understandably it is cheap, but it's a crap to work with. You've really got to make sure you do the joints really well. Uh, I found, I've gone to this stuff, it is a bigger investment, no doubt about that, but it just lasts forever and, well, when I say forever, I, it looks very sturdy. Um, it's the sort of stuff I've used uh, in Australia and um, it's really easy to work with and it's, it's really hard not to do the joints properly. Um, you know, with this one, you've got to make sure you get the glue right and put enough glue on it. Uh, and you can see there that that wasn't the case. I think it was used sparingly, and so we had leaks with that, and that you certainly don't want to be wasting any water in leaks. And so this one, well, you know, you can see the odd bit of moisture. That's going to be from the rain. I can't spot any leaks in this system at the moment. Uh, it's not to say they aren't there, but it's really minimised from what we had. Initially, we had blue pipe for that one as well and I replaced all that I think the last of the previous trip uh, with this other um, you know it's more or less irrigation pipe and it's just brilliant it's it's so easy to work with and um, you know to do this type of of setup um, I'll, I'll do a full video on this this is just sort of a bit of rambling but uh, what I'll probably do is keep these for um, put these two for the just the house uh, probably keep the valve in there just that one keep that valve but possibly move this t-junction here to the other side of this if I do another tank here uh, because that will allow it to feed into the uh, watering uh, you know the plant watering system that's the idea of this it, it allows a separate tank of what we had is river water to feed just to water plants and our rainwater gets saved um, for washing and showering so and, and cooking obviously although we use the, the, the good water I think for the <laughs> hope we are anyway no one's got sick yet so that's good whatever they're using um, in that department uh, must be the right thing so this system here does allow me to easily expand and it also I believe allows me to if I eventually put a tank at the top of the hill from a deep well for instance it also allows me to bring in water from somewhere else and put it feed it into the system here so um, yeah it's 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 really working well actually so anyway, it's just a little update on our water system and what we're doing with it at the moment.